Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are listening to the sound of my voice. I want to welcome you to Waterhouse Vibes, a podcast that is here in Jamaica time. Uh, okay. First, let me apologize to the listeners for this late start. Uh, as you know, technology is not my forte, so I work with what I have. And this morning I, I tried to set up this podcast on a different laptop, but somehow slow. But that is the case. We are here today and let's put get the show on the road gentlemen this week was a bloody week in J jamaica very bloody week he died in he was murdered in clarendon three murdered in st thomas one in waterhouse murder so you have at least eight and three and one 12 individuals lost their life this weekend last in the past week i i don't know what's happening certainly the jamaican people must be tired of this brutality and the violence and i'm not sure that's something which must be of concern to every jamaican we want to talk about that but most importantly we want to talk about what is happening in venezuela Yesterday, there was a massive demonstration in Caracas, and people are asking for a new election. I, I, I'm not sure what the truth is, because I, I wasn't in Venezuela during the election. Fortunately, we have a brother man, a brother man who was an observer to that election, brother Trevor Brown. He represented the Caribbean as an observer in Venezuela. And I invite him to join us and tell us what's happening from his vantage point. Brother Trevor is a, is a communication specialist in the Caribbean, a man who's active and one who's a stalwart in the whole progressive movement, the Caribbean progressive movement, Caribbean and Latin American progressive movement. So Trevor has the standing to talk with us today and let us know what's happening if you have any question please put in the chat and i'll have him speak to that in addition to trevor today we have the same cast of characters uh last crawford john arton and i'm waiting for brother patrick to join me i also invited brother will ratigan to take part and he texted me and said that he had another engagement so this is the cast we're going to have, right? So, Brother Trevor. Yes, heal my you just, you just returned from Venezuela. Yes. And you heard what is happening. You heard what is happening, yes. demonstration yes. and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think the first question to you, my brother, is what the hell is happening in Venezuela? What is really going on? What's the true story here? All right, and, and just to, to, to begin, to begin by correcting um, that while I was a representative from Jamaica, we had other Caribbean brothers and sisters, because all told, I think there were six countries represented. There was Saint Lucia, Saint Vincent, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, and ourselves Jamaica. So maybe it was about five or six countries. And I think we gave a good account of ourselves. We were part of a 100 countries from across the world and all five continents that were at this, what I'd say, consequential election. Um, but just to, just to, before I go back in, just to say a little about seeing demonstration, Michael. You, you have to be careful. And I remember having to correct my other media comrades here in Jamaica, not comrades, colleagues, 
who I remember doing the trying to to prop up one Guaido, the man who stand up in the in the in the in the square of Caracas and the president. What they actually did in, in that case, they used the anniversary of Chavez and the crowd that was assembled there. And when you go to Venezuela, you'll know about Chavez and John and Mikey will, will, will know this with me, that the color of the those kinds of people, the socialists and the communists is red. So that whole, the, the majority of the crowd was red. There was army people in there, their 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 fatigue green so when i sent the story because i wrote to all the, the different um media houses which seems what they do they serve as conduit for the corporate media in your what you call it you know, your adopted homelands they get the story from hp from upi from whatever source and they just drop it pick it up and drop it without any critical kind of a check back as you know in, in in journalism what you do you get a story you check it once you check it twice sometimes all four times and that is part of it so i've having not seen that what you thought we spoke about michael but what i can tell you yesterday at mira flores palace that is where the president stays there was a massive crowd and, and you have to i i really have to see the picture that you saw because after at the end of that election night on the 28th of july while i was there i was part of a crowd that reminded me of sam sharp square when we say what angel and what angel and precisely I, I i left mira flores on the 28th um about well 29th because the early morning i left there about 3 a.m after the election was announced 80 percent of the votes was counted and 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 it was a a lead that could not be overthrown and then you know the the psuv or what they call the patriotic poll which there are a number of different organizations that was behind the psuv so you have the communists you have the socialists you have the liberals they call themselves the great patriotic poll when they all assembled to to celebrate that victory back to the election now that is where we i think we are starting from it's difficult or not impossible for you to bogus or fraud the venezuelan electoral system so when Why president okay I, 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 no, man. I, no man you can't let him just talk and then we ask question at yes. The end. yes yes okay yes and, and let me tell you why and jimmy carter the former president he made a comment before the guys had reached even the stage of layering and, and to, to prevent this kind of bogus. I'll just give you an example of what, what I saw and what obtained in Venezuela. It will take you approximately a minute and a half to vote and to exit, exit the polls. And it begins this way. You enter the poll. The polling area you are checked um you have your well id like we would have our electoral id or some kind of national id it's checked against the book that yes michael or john or patrick or leo is this is his polling area when your name is found you are sent to a, a desk across from where you were checked and you do what you call a biometric print your thumbprint is matched against you the person because they would have had that in their system okay uh, a receipt is, is um is printed to identify michael now you move to a polling booth which is you know the disposable one where you you can't your, your cardboard thing where you put up and you dismantle at the end of so you go behind that booth and on a 20 about a 21 inch screen a touch screen television you see all the candidates that are now vying for in this case the president you put your thumb on the person touch the red i want to vote for john and it asks you are you really voting for john do you want to confirm that john i say yes i confirm you touch john 
and a, and a voting receipt is printed. You take that voting receipt, you look at it, and you drop it in a ballot box that is just a little way from where you actually did that um, on screen voting. You drop, you drop it in the box now, and then you move to a table that is beside that same table that you entered first where they found out they were searching for your name as a pollster, as somebody who has the right to poll in that. Your thumbprint is against placed against your name when they found it in the first place. That's mm -hmm. you, you, are, you are eligible to vote here. You, 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 it's dipped in ink against your name. In Jamaica, you say you, you dip your finger to say you're poll. But now what you do, you put a, a, your, your fingerprint against your name and then you sign it. Say, so, well, my colors vote. You sign your regular signature. Now, during all of this, they are the representatives of the different political parties or their representatives that are there to observe what is happening. Okay? At the end of each polling, in every polling booth, there is a signing off by everybody there that this is the actual poll results. And how they get that now? The receipts in the box that you have drew, that you got from your, your thumbprint is matched against what is on the screen. And as they say in banking, and John would know about this now, you do a balancing. I mean, I, I've heard of cases of your tellers cannot leave the bank until whatever money they paid against the receipts is balanced. So when that is balanced, then you know that is okay. That is done right across the country. In addition to that, in addition to that, there is a 54% of the voting machines that are checked at different periods during the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. start and closing of the poll. 54% of the machines right across the country. I think in this case, there are 21, it was over 21 million people that was eligible to vote. Over 12 million voted this time. So a 51% um, vote is um, of the machines to see that they are working, they are working conditions. Then there's another layer now. There is what we call now our, our EOJ. They call it um, the CNE, that is the, the uh, Venezuelan Electoral Council, which is independent of the government. It has three representatives from the, the ruling party, and it has two representatives from the opposition party. And they have to sign off that, yes, what we see is what obtained. So on those grounds, I'm saying it's nigh difficult for anyone to really go. I mean, two persons can't vote, because remember, it's biometric. And I heard of cases of, I mean, it's in the Western press that fraud and thing. So even with that, and I heard you're, you're a Secretary of State. I say yours because you guys are living there. Say that there's overwhelming evidence. But up to today, the, 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 what, the 18 that I'm speaking to you, there is not one shred of evidence that have been brought to bear to dispute the final results. And, and while there was a clamoring by different states in the that they try to do a thing with the OS that the results are being delayed and all these kinds of things constitutionally it, it gives the Venezuelan one month to produce it but they didn't do that they didn't do that I think it was a what four days because it was the 80 percent that they were working on at the point when Man, uh, Maduro had 51 percent and getting 51 percent you know that you're in government so now when they have completed, when they did the, the other, the, the other, what do you call it? To complete the one, the, the hundred percent now. Um, you know, you know all, all kinds of stories. But just to tell you this though, prior to the, 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 the vote of the elections, all 10 candidates for the post of president was asked to sign a document which says that, listen, we will agree with the outcome of the election. The unitary platform, which is the party that the US back and is supported, 
was the only party that did not put their signature on that document that they'll agree on it. So if you start from a position that whatever result you get will not be the correct result, then there's no way how anybody can win. You understand? It's a foregone conclusion. And um, because of, okay, oh, I need to point this out to you. The presumptive or the de facto presidential candidate for the Democrats tweeted an abridging of from Argentina came to me um, early, I think it was late, late Sunday evening. He actually showed me the tweet where she said that the opposition has lost. And I know you don't hear any of that. So Kamala Harris, 23 minutes after the closing of the polls, said that the opposition has lost the election. You understand? But none of this, none of this information would have been in the public right. domain, and especially where you live. So that is my first point. So guys, you can open up and we can go into a lot of things and why, what is happening what, and, and what's not happening. And, some of the, the things, because Venezuela is quieter than Jamaica, quieter than Jamaica right now. Yes, two things I, I want to make, if I may. Um, yes. Mikey, yes. Uh, I've been watching this thing carefully. There was a demonstration here in Orlando, downtown yes. yesterday. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I recall very clearly that there's been no election in Venezuela since Chavez that the U.S. government has said is fair. The last election, they brought a man from Venezuela, the same name you just called. Yeah. Trump brought him into the Congress to speak. Yeah. This election is a woman. I never see where, I don't know where that woman come from. I see yeah. her on TV. I can't tell you a little about her, John. Sorry, i tell you more about her. Yeah, well, let, let me just make the point and then you tell us about this woman because <clears throat> there's been no election since um, the revolution Chavez. Chavez, yes. Yes. that the U.S. government has agreed is acceptable. And this lady who is on TV, just to make confirm what you said, when they show you a picture on TV of her speaking, they never show you the crowd. They only show you the camera is focused on the people on the platform and she has a microphone talking. They never show you the crowd in the same, with the same scan. So you don't really know how many people are in front of her. They just show you her talking with this microphone and then so i was i was confused i only know that the last election they brought a man who came to congress trump was the president here and he came to congress and then him disappear you know we have a woman there is a man that they refer to as being the the, the person that that they, she's supposed to be representing. So if you can help me understand how it yes. goes, where the opposition leader come from, because it's just all the blue. All right. So so I, I take the questions one after one. All right. So we deal with this lady now, um, Brother John. In any other country, the same lady Machado, who you speak of, she would have been considered enemy of the state and she would have been in lockup. Machado, she's from the elite. And Machado disqualified herself because when during 2015, just a little, about 2015, 31 elections have been held in Venezuela since Chavez. Listen to me, comrade. 31, an average of an election every 10 months and it's either legislative parliamentary constituent um different types of things so if this man is a dictator as they say is chavez and then him are dictators then there is no way 
out the same system that you are using, we are out of those 31 elections. The opposition has won two, but none at the presidential level. There is no cry of fraud, John, as you rightly said, whenever the opposition has won any kinds of elections. So back now to Machado. Now. Machado, while he was a member of the assembly in, in Venezuela, because there was a move in 2015 to, to, to sanction Venezuela through the OAS, she decided as a Venezuelan to represent Panama, to add to the Panama numbers in the OA, to add to the numbers of countries that would want to sanction. So when she, when the US was putting her up as a candidate. A candidate in, here in Venezuela. It, because if you can recall, just follow me now. If you can recall in 2023, late October, the U.S. said they would ease the 930 sanctions that they have imposed on Venezuela since Barack Obama. 930 is only Russia that has been more sanctioned than Venezuela. In that, in, 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 in that period, in that same period when, uh, this lady, that when they were trying to tighten the screws, they use the OAS as a kind of diplomatic cover to help to isolate Venezuela. That didn't work. So Machado now, as a Venezuelan, went into OAS to vote against, vote against um, Chavez, to, vote against, oh, to um, vote against Chavismo, which is the government. And they say, no, no, there's no way how you could, how you can be running for the head of state of a country that you actually went into a forum to ask for, I think it was either intervention or something of the sort. So she could not run as Machado. She's disqualified and you don't hear that in your corporate man media. This man now, Gonzalez, is a former diplomat and call him a whole grandfather, but his past is such that the declassified CIA documents link him to and, I, I, and Mikey and John may, may be more Ophi on this than our brother Leo and, and Patrick. To remember when you had this Operation Condor in the um, in that central... Yes? Well, it, a lot of that operation came out of the Venezuelan embassy. Castillo was the, emb was the ambassador. And, and this man, Gonzalez, was his right, right hand. So there's a strong argument out there that this so-called grandfatherly figure is connected to Father Romero, all those other atrocities that went on there, he would have a connection to it. So because Machado could not, was disqualified by herself and the action that she had taken now, he was a kind of aged little man. Machado is 51, so she was the lady who was the person who was actually on the streets trying to do well, you had to call it the campaigning. What we later found out, it was not so much campaigning. It was much to organize, what you call it, the, the banditos, people who had connections to the uh, Colombian drug people, organizing them that after the election, then we are going to do things. We are going to carry out the extra electoral matters. And, and just to say one thing on this electoral, extra electoral matters. On the 26th of July, one of my very good friends and, and Paul and, sorry, John and, and Mikey knows him well. Paul, Burke, call me. I said, Trevor, what is your assessment of the situation? Now the elections is the 28th, you know. But on the 26th, which was a Friday, which as you know was rebellion day in Cuba, 26th of July, when he attacked Moncada. He said, Trevor, what is the situation with Venezuela? I said, if I'm to go by what I see on the streets, and I'm in Caracas, that's what was my base, the capital. I have hardly seen any kind of opposition paraphernalia, you know? The normal thing when voting are going, banners and posters and all those kinds. I've hardly seen any of them. And it gives me some concern. 
And here is the concern now, John and Michael and Leo and Patrick. If you are contesting last, an last. election as a, as, a, as a presidential election, you don't think you would be out there with the other man. You maybe don't have the resources of them, which we know is not the case with the, with the U.S. and them because they, they have the full backing of the State Department. Wouldn't your presence be out there like them? So I said, Paul, it gives me the concern that there's a non-electoral agenda that may be in, in the background. And so say, so, so done. That was just my little, what you call it, bird brain assessment of what I saw based on my movement around Caracas prior to the elections. So I heard what this lady was doing. It's not so much campaigning, but she was organizing for the, 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 the criminal elements that it turned out to be to really cause mayhem after the elections. And the kinds of things that you will not hear again is the extent to the looting, the burning, the destruction of schools, clinics, food warehouses, and plazas that have taken place. You'll not see that in the, in the, in, in, the in, in, in your corporate news. You'll never see that. Because as far as it's concerned, they are concerned, is Maduro is the obstacle. And yes, he's a obstacle to them. Because even prior to him, Chavez, the guys want to control their resource that they are using now. And just to give one example, this year, they are on target for 5 million houses to transform those people who live in the barrios, or what we call in Jamaica ghetto, or in Brazil, they call it the favelas. And how they do this is that wherever there are, there are these 10 story houses, um, okay, favelas being transformed. It's like a community that is built around there. So there's a clinic, there is supermarket, there's all the amenities that you as that need for, for life to, to, to exist. And this is what is causing now the shift. And as long as Maduro can continues on this path. Housing, as I was one, they are now the food sovereignty. 85% of what they eat are grown locally. So it means they are in control of their own food situation. They are diversifying the economy where between 2018 and now is a what, what? One million new businesses have come on stream and they say 60,000 new brands. I mean, I was so surprised, pleasantly surprised, because if you follow the stories that you hear about Venezuela and go in there and see, you say, no, guy, <laughs> something is wrong. Something is, is wrong about the stories that you are hearing. But John and Michael and Patrick, I don't know if you are here during the, that period leading up to 1980s, but I know John and Michael know what we go, what we went through. And you have to multiply that in Venezuelan case, Jeffrey Sachs, who is no, is no socialist, yep. Jeffrey Sachs have quantified, the no, he, he did a study that the number of Venezuelans that have died as a result of the economic sanctions, the 930, is 40,000 Venezuelans that, are, that have directly impacted by, they can't get the medical supplies, they can't get the necessary things to keep life and so on. If it, if it was not for the Cubans and for the Russians, even the whole question of, of vaccine, where the UN say, listen now to the US, if you have a problem with a country, this is a, this is a what you call it, this is a, a pandemic. This is a pandemic that the whole world is, is really affected by. You need to ease back on that. And it was the same situation with Cuba. Cuba had to manufacture their own vaccines in order to. So I raise these two points to say that. The kind of strictures that they have placed on Venezuela, not to add the fact that CITGO, which you know is a Venezuelan institution set up in America to help poor people who cannot afford the, the high prices of gas, the American has seized that asset. The British have one billion worth of gold bullions for the Venezuelan sitting on and don't want to release it because then was when as, as, John, as John pointed out, when Guido decided that he, he is the president, and then it the, means the president will have all of these resources to, to use, you know? So I, I stop there again. I mean, I don't know if there are other questions that the comrades want to raise. Patrick, last. I have a question for you. Yes. Yes. Trevor. 
You yeah. keep on, you keep yeah, on, man. you keep on referring to they. Who is the they you're talking about? They meaning the US? The US. No, you listen now. <laughs> you have to understand, you know. The Venezuelan sits on the largest deposit of oil. It has been agreed right now. In the world. In the, in the world. world. All right, John. All right, John. Not, not only that, too, but Venezuela has now been formally accepted by BRICS to be a member. Now, think of this now. If you have a country like Venezuela, who, when you add the Russian oil, and I think the Saudi is now part of that, you are saying that the majority of the resources of the oil in the world are within that BRICS framework. Okay? So, look at what is happening in Europe. Look at what is happening in Europe. Europe has a serious and, and in another little while, winter starts when for you guys sometime in November or when there. They they suffered, they suffered, they suffered last year as a result of the blowing up of that Nord Stream pipeline because of the Ukraine-Russian war. So part of the thing is that the US want to get this and if not on the Venezuelan oil and Venezuela territory, but the one that is next door where there's a dispute between Venezuela and the Esequibo region, between Venezuela and, um, and Guyana. Guyana. And Guyana. So if you get the oil to that market now, it means that my guys in Europe will not suffer the way they are to the point that the US and the British have, have military exercises with Guyana as a way of trying to shore up whatever support. And, and guys, I don't know if you have been following that Guyana thing, but it is the worst oil deal that ever existed in the world. The only people who are getting anything I hear maybe is the leadership of the party that Teddy Dragon founded. And I hear that the kinds of money that they have because of the bad deal that they did. The people of, of Guyana, even the other day, I think the civil servants and the nurses were demonstration in demonstrating about you know their their situation their plight there. Yet there is some serious oil there in the Esequibo region. So we are saying a lot of what is happening has to do with who control our resources. And it was from the days of, of, of Chavez. Remember, the coup against Chavez was taken after Chavez decided that he was going to run out Exxon and, and control his oil by himself. That coup lasted 48 hours when they took out Chavez and the people decided to go in the street that we want back our leader. You know? So it, it's, it's really not a... It, it, it's not a... It's not a... It's hold not hold something on. to take away. Yes. Guys, can you mute your phone? Because I'm getting a feedback when Trevor talks. Continue, Trevor. Last thing. Trevor is off. I don't know. Some like some interference, but what what you make, brother man? What what you you make so far from what Trevor is saying? Hello? I'm not getting trouble. Patrick, last, what, what's, what is your impression from what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. The, the thing what I noticed what is that... Recently? I don't know what happened recently, but, you know, uh, I'm back. All right, let's... Go ahead, Trevor. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah, well, yeah, what I was saying, it all boils down to, to what is under the ground. And it's not only oil, you know, but they have gold. They have some other strategic mineral that I hear. Um, what this guy here now is back in Trump, that one who controls X. Elon um, Musk. Elon Musk have an interest in. Oh, Musk. And Musk, and, and Musk is playing a very diabolic role there now because even he has shut down like the Twitter account of Maduro and other people that he considers important in the Venezuelan um, state structure and so on. And, you know, and just to make the point that people, we have access to 
what we call it social media but it's up to the extent that we doesn't we don't shake up anything which the venezuelans are doing now we we don't ruffle any feathers in terms of uh allowing them to do to run amok you know that kind of way but from your stand up man you have to prepare for these kinds of things so it's all boils down to who can control and do what they want to do with the the, the, the west and, and just to make a point too about the sanctions and as you you all would know that sanctions are illegal it's only the united nations that have the power to sanctions yet the united states as you know it takes it, it like it has become normalized against who they call their so-called enemies and it's largely because of the power of the the us dollar as the, the international currency so much so that i think it was 350 billion of the russian uh resources that is in us dollars the, the last argument that the us have i don't know if it will work but they are planning to use that money to finance all of the weapons and the training and all the other things that they are doing now for ukraine just to seize it in that kind of way i see we try something out here like that you know where the assets that venezuela had in in in, in petro jam which is our oil refinery which is 49 percent during the trump time there was meeting with pompeo former cia man and pump one of pompeo thing was that they should take action against venezuela and one of their actions was to was to seize the 49 percent of venezuelan assets so much so now as far as our petro carib arrangements are concerned we are one of the countries that are out of it and you know that what and you know that was our savior here because the, the kind of concessionary deals that we get nowhere else that exists in the world where you you don't start paying like you just said 10 years after or five years and you can pay in whatever product suppose you want to give him bananas suppose you want to give him box like any product that jamaica had yet we decided to that we are going to cut our nose to spite our face yeah. question question trevor yeah um how long ago did you leave um venezuela, venezuela. yeah i left there on the, the, the 38th Okay. I, spent, I spent 21st to the 30th 10 days so, yeah. so that was before any kind of court action was taken against the the elections by the opposition right it's after yeah. that day no I, I can i can maybe dispel that michael <laughs> as a matter of fact the unitary platform are in contempt of the supreme court now in venezuela meaning because uh, there, there are this, there's this argument about the validity of the elections. The Supreme Court took the decision. No, I think Maduro says, listen now, guys. And then you raise it to the Supreme Court. All of you, all of us who, who uh, contested the elections should bring all the information that we have to the Supreme Court to validate our claims. So far, the only one was not turned up and that we say they are in contempt of court someone was issued for them is the same unitary platform john that this lady who was like the puppeteer for gonzalez who was the man up front that they are in contempt of the venezuelan court so that's another issue that will come up so it, so don't get it wrong they are hiding from the supreme court because that's that's why I'm asking you because I notice even writers have been yeah. saying that that these people have not presented any any um, evidence in court despite their saying right and supplying the world with the information that there's bogus not, right? not, have not, not one have not as a matter of fact writers are saying that some of these people have not turned up in court. <laughs> this is what I've seen, Michael. They are in contempt of court right now. And as you know, Gentlemen, like in Jamaica. Can, can you hold it? I want to bring Herb Nelson into the yeah. discussion. Well, welcome, Herb. All right. Yeah, proceed, proceed, my brother. 
Proceed. Yes. Hey, thank you and greetings to my fellow panelists and the audience. Um, I made a comment there, Trevor, when yes. you said only the, only the United Nations can impose yes, sanctions. Country. Yes. No, so any country can impose sanctions. The UN Security Council votes yes. on it and recommends it. Yes. Right? They recommend it, but the individual countries um, can impose sanctions as well. So are, are those sanctions are, are those sanctions binding? Because how can you and, and look at it for example now? Israel who is a ally of America. Yeah. And and, and their the, the genocide that is taking place would have made any I mean <laughs> Boy, let me tell you, man, I've never seen anything else in my, my time on her. Israel, when when they uh the whole question that was raised about the the ICC, uh it never actually imposed the sanction, but it said that listen now, guys, you need to stop what you are doing. We need to go and examine a lot of the stuff that you are doing. Israel, Israel actually Throw it back in their face, and as a matter of fact, there was from this man from the from, from the U.S. side who said that the the the, uh, the the people who served on that panel, including one of our Jamaican jurists, um, Robinson, Justice Robinson. Robinson, that they should be locked up or sanctions, that kind of thing, just to so so you, you see where I'm coming from, Earl, that yeah. this sanction is used in a way that it's only it only suits. The so-called friends of the U.S., but if you are not a friend, if you are not a friend, and the, one of the main, as I say, one of the main foundation of the sanction is the fact that the international currency for trade is is the U.S. dollar, and that is why they are so threatened by BRICS, because what BRICS have actually started doing now, they are using their currency until they have sorted out and the thing grown i mean because we don't expect the us dollar to topple down in another 5 10 15 20 years or more but they are actually trading among themselves which i hear the last thing that the world bank says that there'll be like a, a slowing down based on what is happening now with a, a new partner in, in in as far as you know the, the currency is concerned you know there there is a point i would like to make if i may sorry yeah uh, in watching the news, I've been watching this thing very carefully. Fortunately, I'm unemployed. I'm retired, so I have all the time in the world to watch this. The, the opposition party pull up some document. Yes. What they claim is that they have done a post-election um, <laughs> scan of the polling yeah and it showed that x amount of people have voted for this the old man yes, right? and, is, yes. and they all up i don't i don't care about the names really because it's such a it's such a scandal all i remember is the last election you have a little young boy come to congress say him is the opposition leader no is this woman so them change them change um, opposition leader like how I change brief. Yeah. So <clears throat> my point is that they hold up a paper in front of the TV camera and you can see where, you know, all they're saying is that this proof um, that the election is, the, the outcome is not according to the council, the electoral council that tally the mm -hmm. votes. The second, the second question I want to ask you related to that is that in the U, in the OAS, which is the body that the in, that the US is using, yeah, so to to give strength, yes, to a coalition of the willing, yeah, yeah to the coup, yeah, the coup attempts, yeah, coalition of the willing in. Latin America, how does Jamaica vote? Oh, John, <laughs> I start from that one. You remember 
as a little country, just like we're in athletics, where they say we punch above our, our weight. From the days of Father Manley, when we were one of the first countries that that started this this, this struggle against apartheid, where they said no, no transaction, no kind of, what we call it now, no commerce. We were we are going to ostracize South Africa. There should be no commercial trading or anything. It was us that started it. Okay, from Michael, even before Jamaica gained independence, and consequent our subsequent leaders, whether they are JLP or PNP, we always have a kind of standing in the world where they would go with the Jamaicans. Jamaicans say something, and it's like a reflex action. Michael Manley, leader of the Third World. He have the non-aligned movement and so on. This year government, even Bush, even Bush Golden had to chastise him. When the whole question of even with Israel to move the capital from where it was, from um, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, we were one of the two countries in the world that agreed. America was the first one. So we are really, I, I like to make this comment. Where we are hoping the Americans are, is in our foot showing. You understand? So, 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 listen, listen, John. There is a photograph. I don't know if you guys can can recall when Trump asked some Caribbean leaders, the same willing, to and Mia Motley, who now is the spokesperson for, especially us in the Caribbean and even in a wider scale, she stands up for the the South and the people in the Third World. Mia Motley was the chairperson. Of CARICOM, our chairman, they say she's whether it's man or woman, is chairman. And Pompeo decided to go around her. And the willing, who are the willing? It was Andrew Wellness, it was the guy from Bahamas, it was the other guy who was in St. Lucia, he was a former employee of Booth Short. Yes, yes, Chasnet. It was the brother in guy in Guyana then. But there are five of them. When the Trump the Haitians were there too. Yeah, and the Asians, yes, brother. You're you're so correct. When they came to visit Trump at Mar a Lago, I never felt so low in my life, um, John, and the rest of um brothers on, on, on this um this chat. You know, somebody come visit you. And we're talking though, it's not gonna look a guy as far as we are concerned off the street. These are heads of state where they were placed. Is at the exit door, so you don't make him sit on the veranda, you know. You find some chairs. I'm going to find. I don't know if you guys can record, or maybe you guys don't have it. But you know, the, you come, you 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 know. Sometimes you go to a nightclub and you have an exit entrance. They find some chairs, like six chairs, for the heads of state. So even to stay on Trump veranda, Trump was not prepared to do that. So that is where Jamaica is, as far as the. The international community is concerned. Anything that goes against progress. I want to tell you this too. The first time that ca cafe that you and I wearing around our neck, John, when the first UN vote took place for, I think it was the recognition of, of, um, of Palestine, Jamaica, Although our position in CARICOM is one where we are we are the leaders in this round on foreign relations within the CARICOM setup of 14 um, countries. Jamaican, the Jamaican representatives stayed in the toilet, man. They didn't come out to vote. So it's after pressure reached now. There was another vote maybe another week after. And pressure we start. Lick statue in Jamaica that we willingly so, and even in the case of Palestine, where right now all the CARICOM countries mm -hmm. have taken the position that yes, they recognize the, the Palestinians, they need for, for the Palestinian state. Jamaica ducked on that question because what now? We have contract with the Israelis that even now we as a public in Jamaica don't know the extent of it when. Uh, the, no, the security minister of national security was questioned in parliament it was during the time of trump too i can recall that he had this guy here who was a funder i think he gave trump 300 
thousand dollars towards it campaign and they gave Trump gave him the ambassador post to come to Jamaica. But he was always in our business and Andrew couldn't do anything. He just knows it. He asked Andrew, he asked the Prime Minister, then why did you not go to America for the kind of oh Andrew said that the deal that we have with Israel is of, of, of a cyber security nature. And then he came out and he says, um, so why you never come to US? And we have those kinds of, 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 of tools that you know you could use and that kind of way. So we really, we really stable as a country. We have no standing in CARICOM and we have no standing in the so-called South or Third World region where we stay and maybe in the greater world. We are seen as a US, what do you call it, psychopath or acolyte. That's where Jamaica is right now. The popular word is lucky. Lucky is the lucky word. Man. Same one. Yes. Same one. Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. I think Patrick wants to say something. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, Trevor, you 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 have touched on quite a number of moving points. Yes. But I think the main thing is that you have not expounded sufficiently. And yes. I probably not touched at all. Yes. Is in terms of how the information flows. Right? Okay. And what causes it to flow the way it does. All right. And that determines everything. All right. right. All right. All right. And and, and and just to just to some of the points you have made. Um this pretty much is where it started. I mean, you gotta understand that. Um the media control is the main thing, and, me, and, and information blackout and all of that makes a huge difference in terms of what people are able to follow and understand, and the news they get and all of that. Because a lot of what is happening is happening because of that very reason. And at the same time, right, there's a move afoot as to how they can better regulate the social media. Right. So 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 it is some of these parts that are really coming into play or have been in play. Right. And we see it play out on a bigger scale and so on. Right. The other thing too that um you touch on it, but we don't, you never expanded on it was with the petrodollar. Because I mean you, you have you have the facts, but it's just that you have not been able to collate it in a way that it and show the connection. All right. Right. Um, over the years. All right. So so Patrick. You, you really you really have touched the as you say you touched a move and I touch and I move. And um pardon me pardon me for doing the way I have done it. But um as you say you have touched on a, on a really really important point because if you can remember and as someone who's uh, who's really love history, I remember reading about the Third Reich, Hitler's time. There was a brother by the name of Joseph Goebbels. He was, he was the head of propaganda for Hitler. And Joe Be Goebbels came with this theory that if you tell a lie enough, with enough time, enough frequency, <laughs> they invariably... <laughs> That's what people, Trump has been reading, Trevor. It, is the, is it, it, it becomes the truth. It and so right. this, is, this is where we are, Patrick. So, for, for example, now, I can tell you this. There's a brother who has fought in it to meet. I used to fo I follow him on on on, on um what you call it you now? Too. Um, you too? No. His name is Alan MacLeod from Mint Press. Alternative media. All right. So Alan, Alan, I was glad to have met him because he was one of the observers too. Alan did his PhD on how the West, uh how the, the Western media uh deals with venezuela and one of the, one of the points that alan and he, he, has, he has shared it with me not his entire phd but he made a presentation because one of the things that took up time during that 10 days that i was there we were looking at alternatives to what is happening currently so people spoke on the media people spoke on econ people spoke on housing uh health and so on alternatives to what we know as the norm within a capitalist setting so in part of alan's presentation and subsequent to that he, he and i spoke one-on-one -on -one and you know 
we, he and I, I think we were two doors from each other on the floor that we stayed at the, the Melia Hotel in Caracas. So we were always communicating. He showed me where you remember going to a New York Times reporter and um, asking him, so, so tell me something. Why is it that you are writing these things about Venezuela when you know it's not really so ago? The guy turned to him and he actually called the guy in him that we are mercenaries for hire. We are mercenaries for hire. That's the way they see themselves. And he says that, he followed up, and he says that, listen, they say if they carry anything that looks like the semblance of the truth on the Venezuelan question, and they know so that is not going to get published, and they will get, they, they will not be in favor of the editor and the owners of the thing. One of the guys who he, he I think it was, was NBC that he, uh, he quoted, he, they consider themselves the shock troops the shock troops against Chavez, and now that Chavez has transitioned, against Maduro. Because their thing is to bring down socialism. He even got, went as far as showing him a case of a guy who wrote a story that went viral right across the world. And the guy was smiling. The guy never, I mean, he was very joyful about this. That. As a result, listen this now, no? As a result of failed socialism in Venezuela, a condom costs $750. Hmm. So you see how, how the thing is framed. It is framed that even for to protect yourself or to prevent unwanted pregnancy or whatever we, we, we use condom for. Socialism is so bad that you can't do that. And, and, and when, he, when, he, when he said to him, so I don't understand, he said, no, man, this is considered what you call a sexy trick. And the more of this you do, is the more you are in favor. For example, now, you're in favor with the editor. There is a, there is a, a what you call it, um, a polling. A polling, a polling um, organization. It's called um, the, the, the name. I want to see if I can find it. A polling, a polling by the name of Wow. It was the only station. It will come back to me. It is the only, only polling institution that gave the the opposition any kind of. In tough that they could actually win. And when you trace the roots of that polling station, it links you right back to Langley in Virginia. Need I say more? So I was just listening to MSNBC the other night. And them better than Fox, you can listen to them and so on. I, I wanted to see how the movement with the electoral thing in, in the US. And this is a black woman, Joy Reid. She was interviewing some other two persons. And while they were talking, she made a snide remark and about the electoral fraud that has taken place in, in, in Venezuela. So I said to myself, but Joy, yes, is a lawyer. She's not a journalist. But there are some ethical things that guide us. As She's a Harvard graduate too, which says a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I'm just saying there are some things that guide us as people are trained in, in, in the profession. That you don't put stories out without fact checking. Sometimes you do all four times. And John, I can remember during my old days at in, in the struggle newspaper, which I had a responsibility for the, in the latter part, maybe the last 10 years of, of, of the party. That we dare not put out something as a matter of fact before the paper goes out on the road we have a legal person who come and look at what we have written to see if it can stand up so that we can avoid the kind of maybe litigation or so on and so forth but one of the things that you are taught is that you get a story you fact check it once twice try sometimes all four times just to see that is what you are saying is the correct thing but no 
with you see part of it is a media coup you know because you you cannot beat the man in an electoral contest but if so I can't, can't, if I can't say this, Trevor, of delegitimizing you have to delegitimize the regime and the only way you can do it is to spread these stories about what is happening sorry patrick you can't continue yeah if if, if i can just say this to, to your point about the fact checking yes is that the other piece to it is it's not just a simple issue of right or wrong yeah because again sometimes it's not what is said but it's what is to be understood from what's being said yeah 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 right so 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 you know there's a way they, they'll present it and and, and <clears throat> you may know this too you know lawyers and so on have a way they can put a spin on it yeah all right and some journalists understand well how to do that as well because that's part of how they control the media you use yeah. the example of people you know journalists are are, are lawyer journalists like like um joy reed and so on right you look at you know again with their their educational training right harvard harvard is is is, is one of the the, the the gatekeepers yeah right? for the for the for the imperialist um precisely education system yeah right so so you know it is it is it is these these pieces right that are manipulated in such a way that really toward what people really can take from what's taking place even it, 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 in, in fact, it's, it's, like, it's like making people think that what they are seeing is wrong or what they are reading is incorrect, right? Even though they're reading it and they can see it and understand it, right? It, it is also telling them that that is to be seen in the reverse. Yeah, yeah. Because you see, another point is, Patrick, Trevor. and yes, 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 Michael. Can I just finish uh, this point? point? Just. Uh, this yeah, what Patrick said. Yes. Yeah. Um, Patrick, if you can, and on the same M MSNBC, I remember this brother Velchi. Velchi was removed from MSNBC because Velchi chose to speak the truth about Gaza. He was removed. He's now back, and I don't know what is the arrangement and so on, but. I find that Belgi was a guy that would speak, speak his mind and speak to, to power because he's one of the guys who have started this bamboo club, you know, that the, the, the um, Republicans have brought up and so on. So within the ownership, and I think um, if you read um, Bernie Sanders' book, he speaks about the fact that this thing about free press is a myth because it's about you having to abide by what the owners, as they say, the gatekeepers, the owners of these institutions determines what goes out there. So you could have them, your art could be as clean as whatever. If you don't go to the line that, that they ask you, that, that uh, is unwritten, then you know you're out and so on. Michael? Yeah, Trevor, you had the, yes, sir. from all that you have said, yeah. Huh? Can you hear me? Yes, Michael. From all you're saying, yeah. it is safe to conclude that there was no fraud in the Venezuelan election. That is what you're arguing. Yeah, it's difficult. I don't see how it's possible, Michael. Okay. And and the point right. is, if you are forty percent, if you are so if you are so confident of what you have, why don't you turn up to the Supreme Court with that? Why are you avoiding the Supreme Court with the evidence that you have to show that you are the legitimate winner? Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? They have to explain that. But you see, this side of the information will not... You see, guys, I remember asking the head of news, coming back to home now, if he knows of Telser. And the man said, Telser? I said, yes, television of the South. Which was set up by is 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 the, is, is, is Cuba, is mm -hmm. Nicaragua, is Venezuela, and there are others. But what Chavez, it does, Chavez helped to set yes, that up. 
it, it gives you more, and, and you guys need to tune into that. I'm going to send the link to you, Michael, and you can share it with your comrade. Every day they have a news thing that comes as a point of view from our side of, of, of the globe. So the guy, uh, the, the man tell me, say, no. But I said, then how can you be ahead of news? And then your neck is quick, strictly to the West. How can I deal with the, 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 the credibility of the things that you have when there's not that kind of balance? You see, it's a different set of things that is that, that is running. I mean, I can't talk of Jamaica now because it's more monopoly. 60% of what we hear. One of the things, one, what are the things I see, Trevor? Ownership. Source. Yes, Lass, Michael. Last. Can you hold it for a minute? Trevor. And, and... Yes, man. Last. It's last. Hi, last. Oh. Yes, last. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying to, 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 to Trevor, one of the, the things I see that, you know, seems to be happening in, in, in the Venezuelan space since Chavez is that, you know, it seems like Chavez and Maduro, Maduro seems to be going against the, the, the trend in the world. That, that trend that is um, backing off from social from socialism and backing off from from certain kinds of social development that the the West approves of, because since Chavez came to power, like the in, in the last in the last Perez government they had tried they, they had begun privatizing the, the, the oil industry again right and privatizing a number of the economic um, support systems inside of Venezuela and then Come Chavez, they, 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 they started the whole process of nationalizing again some of these resources, like the, the oil resources, and further alienating the, 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 the big oil industry players and the US. And I, I don't think the US likes all of that right yeah. when the world is back a lot of the the world is backing off from socialism these people are saying they are defending socialism and certain kind of organization in the society that is not in keeping with the directions of the u.s yeah. right imagine imagine nowadays imagine um sh sh the, the united socialist party is, is one of the few parties in power in the region that yeah, is precisely. openly calling yeah. themselves socialists. Yeah. Right? Like and, yeah. And, and trying to use their resources to, to, to develop, to get more of their resources to develop their own economy. The rest yeah. of the world is, 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 seems to be falling in line with the with the, the US and the whole capitalist direction. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And these people are, are standing up. So it seems like, you know, it's it's like the whole Grenada situation. You don't want an example like that in this region that is Precisely. successful. Precisely. You know? Let, 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 right me, right let me right. add to what Les is saying, um, Trevor. All right. Take Jamaica today and take Jamaica back in the money era, right? Hyperinflation and currency devaluation. Shortages of basic goods. People used to cry over not having them conflicts. Healthcare system collapse. Electricity and water shortages. Migration and brain drain. Crime and insecurity. 
education disruption, school struggles with funding, teacher shortages, and all kinds of infrastructure deterioration, fuel shortages, emotional toll, the stress takes on people, and then you have social unrest and protests to follow. Now, Jamaica went through this during the Monday era because the U.S. effectively, CIA effectively used tactics that denied Jamaica loans from IMF and World Bank and effectively ensured Jamaica's economy would run aground. Now, Jamaica getting IMF support today. But Jamaica going through a lot of the same things like uh, they went through uh, back then. Uh, hold on a yeah. minute for me. Regine, can you sh mute your mic while Earl is talking? We're getting a feedback. Can you just move, mute your mic? All right, Trevor, continue. Uh, Earl, continue, Earl. Yeah. We, we, um, we have the same things happening in a Jamaica that is doing everything that the capitalists want. And we see history repeating itself. And we are sure that at this point, CIA is not undermining Jamaica's economy, but the economy is, is run aground by a very corrupt government. So Venezuela has experienced a lot of what Jamaica went through thanks to the CIA. And then they attempted to uh, overthrow the government and a lot of the, the um, guys like Cuba, they got captured and were jailed. And they had to be, um, you know, bought back pretty much. They paid millions of dollars to get some of these captured people back. So Venezuela has the oil and gas, yes, but a lot of their oil field equipment and liquid natural gas processing equipment is run down. So they, ha they have to operate under limited conditions. If they try to go uh, full tilt, then the, the, the factories might end, end up blowing up. They, we, we have seen these kind of things all around the world where if you don't adapt the U.S. style of uh, democracy, that you're undermined and that your economy comes to a screeching halt. Well, you know, Chavez didn't show any fear. Neither is this uh, leader, even though he's incompetent. Chavez had a little bit more competence and kept things going. But you can only... You have to diversify your economy, and this is what Venezuela has failed to do. And they're, you know, they're, they're yeah. running around, and they're not moving in any you know, upward direction. You know, can, can I just say something, Patrick? It's Patrick now? Yeah, go ahead. All right, Patrick. Patrick. I, Trevor, I, I, can't, I can't see your face, Trevor. You, you, oh, yeah. oh, oh, sorry. No, I, I, John, I, I, John was, wanted I was to charging. say something. I was charging. John, you're muted. I'm muted now. No, you're not. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah man. Hear you. Pa Patrick, can I tell you something? No, it's not With Patrick. Earl. 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 Yeah. Can I say something? Um, A lot has been said about Maduro. And to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I'm not certain whether Chavez, th this guy has proven to me that when Chavez made the, the choice of him and not the other guys, they would have gone through university because you remember part of the thing was classes, even within the Venezuela thing, that this man was a ordinary bus driver. All right? But this bus driver came and then he went through the union, you become union leader and was also Chavez foreign minister. So Chavez must have seen something through him. In that man, that other people are not seeing. And to me, the kinds of maneuvers, the kind of things that he's doing, I rank him. I don't know if Chavez could have taken this kind of pressure that this man has 
Because listen now, and, and, and follow me, follow me why I say this. When after Chavez's death, um, and then there was the, I think there was an election that he won very narrowly. I think the, the, the Americans and the local people, the, the rightists, the oligarchs, them decided to now is the time to push him over. And Barack Obama, that same man, who oh, a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of black people, revered as this icon and this good man. I've never had any regard for Barack Obama. And let me tell you why. I saw, well, I saw where first, I, I, when Obama came to power, I said, Obama, what is, what is Obama antecedents for me to say that Obama is different from those, although he's a black skinned man. Black, we are saying black and white mix up, but closest to black. He did not sh show me enough for me to get any way excited about him. That was one. Secondly, I saw when Obama came to Jamaica, Marcus Garvey, yesterday was his birthday, 137 he would have been. Porsche simply reached out to Bar Barack and said, Barack, you're a man who has studied the history. You know that Garvey was on a trumped up charge. We need you to wipe that state clean because it's not a you give me any blight. You never commit any crime. Obama never did anything. Then when you look at what Obama did now, with, with Venezuela, Obama was the person that said Venezuela constitute a special and a unique threat to America's national security. This is, he did this when Maduro came. So what you are doing now, you're tying in the schools. Because this is a guy who is not, don't have the charisma like Chavez. He's not as popular. He won barely by two, two, what you call it? Two votes? It's two votes, remember? Two, two, not two votes, two. But it was very close, that election, right after Chavez did. So what you decide to do now? I am going to use this opportunity to squeeze him as tight as I can squeeze him so that, like what happened in some countries, like what have they been trying in Cuba and so on, is to squeeze them that the people turn against them. And then you talk out on the other side of your mouth and say that you are only directing this at the, at maybe John, at Michael, at you, Patrick, at Leo, everybody here. Only the leadership would be impacted by it. But inflation came to what? 50, like 1500%? You couldn't, Venezuela, Venezuelan currency didn't mean anything. People could not buy anything. You, I mean, and I'm saying to myself now, I am saying to myself, for Maduro to have survived, and as Jamaica would say, whoop it back. But every move that they made, Maduro was like one step ahead of them. To the point now that Venezuela is the fastest growing economy in Latin America region, Latin American Caribbean region. This year is 7% the model. June gone was 7%. So they're at 4%. They have diversified the economy. That is not the overall dependence because he sees what up how the Americans can, can, can really impact an economy that is so dependent on oil. There are 60, thousand new brands in venezuela which are non-oil brands that business can operate in venezuela that point where you raise about the the, the um the, the equipment that he had that was from the united states and so on that has been a problem that i i don't know they're gonna resolve it because the equipment is what it is and you know it 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 the, the spare parts or whatever it takes to run it so he was forced by the situation to get as creative as he is now. To, to, for what I have seen, and if any of you guys have the opportunity that you want to visit Venezuela, because what they, I think the Americans and the oppo internal opposition is seeing, 
is that if they allow this man, this man is going to use what is there to strengthen his hand, not in an undemocratic way, as as the as the, the US, the Western press want to. This man is a dictator. Yet I don't know a dictator can have 31 elections in, in 25 years. Uh, we're, not seeing, we're not seeing your huh? face, Trevor. We're not seeing your face. Oh, you're not, you're not seeing the face. All right. I'd put down the phone, yeah. I was charging it. Yeah, man. You can have 31 elections barring those from Chavez. You, about 20 odd elections during your time. And yet you're called a dictator. Venezuelan population is one of the most, what you call it now, literate electoral population in the world. Okay? The man, trans the same thing that Fidel did with literacy. That is what Maduro has been pursuing along, I mean, along the Chavez line where he get people to... One of the things that really struck me too is the youthfulness of the, the administration at all levels inside of Venezuela. People in their 30s, people in their 20s. When you look at even the, what you call it now, the the the, the 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 armed forces, the people in the civil service, twenty odd year olds, thirty odd year olds, you see it. It shows you that there is something that is happening in Venezuela. The man have cut poverty rate from where it was on the Chavez to about what three percent there now. So with all the struggles, nine hundred and thirty sanctions, you know, you must remember that. I don't think we could have last in a Jamaica here, <laughs> five of them. But they are able to, to be creative and to use the talent of their people and to hold on to the resources and to find new partnerships in ways that they are marked. So that is why the whole thing about delegitimize Maduro by using the media, by using the, well, the diplomatic channels, by using, what you call it now, organize organize um attack against institutions because when you damage when you damage universities when you damage schools when you damage early early childhood education who as an opposition who wants to run a country would want to destroy those institutions that you yourself and what is very interesting too which uh, mike i'm going to share some material with you that you can share with our brothers and sisters is the yeah is is the is, is the extent to which is the extent to which um the the program that machado had that the, that the 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 um what you call it now unity platform have that it mirrors millel in argentina for us guys who have been following that struggle where you sell out everything and you cut everything so that the, the 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 class that has been traditionally in control control everything this is the program at the platform of the party that the u.s box but you will not hear any of this in the in the, in the corporate media that you guys are subjected to that they're battering every day i mean one of my good friends here said and he was saying to me trevor i see a statement from one of our former ambassadors a man who we know says a strong man because he always stand up on the side of progress but i see him getting a little wishy-washy and a little shaky and him say boy the propaganda strong i say yes and i know you guys being battered every day i'm really sorry for you know? and for those who don't read outside of, of 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 especially outside of what we're getting from abc nbc Fox, and and them bb if the one bbc is supposed to be some kind of fair and unbiased um there's nothing like that. There's a status quo that the U.S. represents more than anybody else. And they have the, the military. The mil Trevor? Hello? <coughs> Trevor? Patrick, you're mute, Patrick. Your phone probably dying. Yeah, I think so. That might be the thing. Gentlemen. 
Listen, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing me. You hear me, me. Um, John? Yeah, man, we can hear you. Yes, I just yes. want, I oh, want okay. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to a very important point that Trevor spoke on. I don't think we should sit here and compare which revolutionary leader has been successful versus who was not. What I think we must remember is that any country that take the path away from what the U.S. prescribe, whether it's in the Middle East, in Africa, and more so in Latin America, they are going to get licks. And those licks is very, they may be subtle, but behind those licks is military, which we can see in, in, in the Middle East. When nothing else can work, the military come in. Here is the people voting for who they would like to lead their country and the country that say it defend democracy for their own people will go overseas and overthrow the government because it don't support their kind of democracy. You remember the slogan of the Non-Aligned Movement? The slogan of the Non-Aligned Movement was that we must have the right to choose our own path. That don't exist right now. And because it don't exist, it is a fight. Sorry to be raising my voice, but it hurt me to know the struggle. Look at, look at the United States. Right now, the, the, one of the biggest issues in the US is immigration, illegal immigration. Where do you think those people are coming from? They are coming from Venezuela. The lines that are passing through Mexico to come here, most of them are coming from Venezuela. Just like how in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, they were coming from Cuba. And this become an issue so that the country that is destabilizing, just like all Jamaicans left Jamaica when Manley was carrying out his experiment in the interest of self-determination. Many of the professional class, the civil servants, left and came to the United States yes, where they're yes. living now. That is what is happening with Venezuela. So it's a, it's a battle. And we must see the real root of it. The root of it is the stranglehold of the United States over the economy of these countries. The stranglehold over the education, the, the, the mental development, the stranglehold over the media, and most of all, the stranglehold over the international markets. How that going to change? Yeah. Well, that stranglehold is not as strong today as it was 15 years ago. Venezuela have new markets that they are selling their oil to, and they are trying to, um, they are trying to reduce dependency on a one product economy but it's, it's a slow process remember what happened in in um every day i think when it, as i was here trevor talking i remember the situation with with gaddafi a man ahead of his time bringing about change in his country 
that will be an example to all of the world, including the African co continent. He was removed by the same government. So I believe we should, we should praise these guys. And Trevor, what I was going to ask Trevor is information. Because one thing that the Americans have over, over all of these countries is propaganda. We don't control the radio. We don't control the TV. We don't have the books. We don't have the literature. They are behind. This is a big weapon that the progressive movement don't have. They are behind in this area. They are behind militarily. They are behind propaganda-wise. And they are behind when it comes to influence in the world. But the influence in the world is changing. I see that you and I know that BRICS coming out with a new currency. The Chinaman them is... Their currency is becoming more dominant, and clearly there are steps to improve that area. But the other areas, gentlemen and ladies, if there is any ladies listening, I see a lot of comments in the in the uh, in the comment column that we should take up, maybe another time. We are behind militarily, and we are very behind when it comes to influence of the minds of the people. Believe me, I watch this TV like a dog watch Boone. The news, whether it's Fox, CBS, CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera. I don't get RT. Somebody referred to RT here. Well, I don't watch that. And the one that, that Trevor mentioned, um, I will re research it. Um, because I've never even heard of that. But these, these, the outlook, the output of these um, news stations are minuscule compared to what is out there from the other side that have that Venezuela would have access to. So I just said this to say, congratulations to the leadership of the Venezuelan people because it's a struggle despite winning election every time them still have to prove that them really win them still have to put up with blockade and most of all the the, the gross propaganda to bring take people out of the country the skills out of the country to come right to my yard um, in Orlando, and they have demonstration. There's only three places that have demonstration, you know, Mikey. Although the lady called for global protests. There's only three places I know that had demonstration, and I'm sure that as information is sent out and people become more informed, they will um, realize it's, it's just gimmicks. So, um, but this is not to, this is not to close the discussion it's just to make us get a sense of balance yeah in John, the living in. There, there was a lady who asked about ta tangibility right and tangibility is what are the visible effects San sanctions has disrupted venezuela's trade the investment and the financial flows. Who who you said this do that? Elaine in the chat. No, 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 that. Not, not, yeah, I don't mean that. I mean you said something about tangents. Tangibility. Is it tangible? Yes, but you said that uh, let, uh, let me finish. All right. Yes, go ahead. The tangibility covers visible effects of sanctions it disrupt trade investment financial flows currency devaluation inflation and shortages become tangible 
and I, I compared Jamaica of the 70s to Jamaica of current because a lot of these things are reoccurring, right? Political impact, sanctions, influence domestic politics, affecting public opinion and government decisions. Monitoring and adaptation, assessing tangible impact requires monitoring over time and adjusting strategies, right? You can have an effective outcome for sanctions, right? Leading to the desired results. They pressured Iran to negotiate a joint comprehensive plan of action on its nuclear program so that Iran has not gone nuclear as yet. Behavior change. Sanction can influence a country's behavior by creating economic hardships affecting trade and limiting access to financial systems. Signaling disapproval, sanction signal disapproval of specific actions reinforcing international norms. Now we know that Venezuela went off and bought billions of dollars worth of Russian arms, Russian armor, Russian uh, fighter jets, Russian helicopter, attack helicopters, uh, and other, they, they changed out the entire weapons system to acquire AK-47s and I think the other one is 74s uh, with the, um, the short butt stock on it so they can fit inside the tank. There's just so many things that they they, they, they went out and shopped for because Chavez expected the U.S. to attack him. And he was going to arm the people's army, which is the people who approve of him would get weapons, as well as the military. Right? So it would make it very difficult for us here in the U.S. to attack him and have to worry about who shooting at them. Because everybody would be armed to the teeth. So we're seeing that um, the, you, uh, the challenges and limitations, unintended consequences, that the civilians are being armed, exacerbation of poverty and the healthcare uh, system under strain, and innocent people are suffering. Some regimes adapt and find alternative sources of income or support. And we see where it has not caused the, the president to release his grip on power, right? So it's backfiring against the U.S. And now that they're threatening, threatening ExxonMobil and Venezuela's oil reserves, I'm sorry, uh, Guyana's oil reserves. We see panic almost setting because the Venezuelans say they're coming across the border and they're going to invade Guyana and take over the two thirds of that Esequiba region that they've been claiming all this time. Right? So you still have a very unstable situation where you have had Brit British warships down there, and you have U.S. warships down there and around uh, Trinidad. So it, until this is settled, I thought it would have been settled when Biden went down, spoke to the Venezuelans and said, listen, now that Russia has cut off their oil and gas supply to Europe, we need Venezuela to step up and fill that gap. And when I thought the sanctions against Venezuela would be lifted, but the U.S. has been stubborn. Biden has not capitulated to any of that stuff. He continue on again, off again, sanctions against the Venezuelans. And we see coming up the Inter-American Highway, we see a mix of populations, majority being Venezuelans. Over 5 million people have left Venezuela. 
right? We have thousands of people leaving Jamaica and coming up the same into American Highway, mingled with the Venezuelans. But they have to pay that money to get across the border for the coyotes to bring them across. So the impact within the Western Hemisphere has been the same. A lot of countries in the Western Hemisphere have been overwhelmed by the cost of living. So overwhelmed you're willing, because I'm the willing, country. Sorry to cut you her. Yeah. What is your point? The point is, it's almost as if nothing has improved for countries who have stayed the course, adapted the United, the adapted United US. Huh? In other words, you're saying that nothing has improved for the countries that have stayed the course that the U.S. has dictated. Right. They've, they've become more dependent on IMF and all of these other things. It's worse. It, it's worse, right? Because of the world situation. The entire world is having a hard time, except for us here in the United States. We just keep printing money. Why? Because the, the, the world currency is the U.S. dollar. So we can print money and get away with it. But if all of our markers were calling tomorrow, we couldn't afford to pay, what, $18 trillion back to the banks or whoever we owe the money to. Right? But these other countries can't just print currency because their currency means nothing on the exchange. They can't exchange their currency for US dollars. But that is not going to, that is the next five years, that is going to change her. Well, that's what the whole thing is. That is the reason why Russia, let me tell you this. The reason why Russia is not on its knees is that they have found alternative ways to deal with the squeeze. That thing that the um, U.S. have, what you call that banking thing where you send money from one bank to another? What you call that thing again? Um, bank transfer. No, man. They have a word for it in the bank. In the bank. Yeah, you I, know, somebody, I, know what you, I know what you're talking right, about. That is famous. The Americans run that. Yep. So uh, where them lock it off? The Russian. That's why the Russian man them can't get their money back. But the fact is, Russia has found a way to get around that. Iran working has found working a way. with the Chinese. Working yeah. with the Chinese yeah. largely. Yeah, my point is that these countries have come together to address this crisis in terms of how we can... We cannot rely on the U.S. dollar anymore. We see where it leads. So Venezuela... Iran, Russia, China. Even China not under any leaks right now, but China know that if them leaking, Mr. 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 Putin over there, because he, he want to have respect from NATO. That what may happen if we try to have respect with regard to Taiwan or Hong Kong? Them see the, them see the writing on the wall. So these countries have had to address this issue. SWIFT, that's the name of it. SWIFT, Swift Bank, yeah, SWIFT, yeah. The SWIFT system. Yeah. Right? Russia is not out of the woods yet, John. No, none of them yeah. are out of the woods. No, because no, they're, they're still deeply entrenched. And yeah, this is what... I'm not saying they are out of the woods. You must yeah. give... A man can make him a step, in one foot still in the wall, he might have another foot out of the wall. The question is, where is he now compared to five years ago? Same thing with the European oil. The, is, the, when the, the, the pipeline was blown up, it was blown up for a reason. To, 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 put, to put Germany in particular, to put the screw on Germany not yeah. to go back and get fuel 
from Russia. Russia. Who are you yeah. going to get the fuel from? From the United States. What but the U.S. did not have enough to supply, so they went to Venezuela and yes, asked the Venezuelan to increase right. there. Yeah, but why? Why they didn't? Why? Why did Venezuela not take up that market? You know why? I'm sure the reason is that the Americans still have squeeze on them. Yeah, and they have the Russians and the Chinese present in the country of Venezuela, right? That's helping them. Yeah, well, whoever going to help you? The point I'm making is we could stay here and di dissect detail. These countries are finding a way. Things are not as doom. A workaround. To work around. No, it's still a mo it's still a bipolar world. It's still a bipolar world. Well, as Palestine show you, is a bipolar world because. Them a take some leaks. John, right? let me ask you one, Patrick. Let me ask you guys this question. I hear the argument, but I'm asking myself this question. And I want to share it with you. Is given all what you say, is that the reason why the Jamaican government operate the way it's operating now? It's like it bowed down to the U.S. government. and Is that the reason? Is it a fear that we can't stand up to the U.S. so we, we bow down and let them run? No, run, no, run not. no, it's not. That's not the reason. Some countries, some countries bow down because the leadership pocket line. You think, you think bowing down means somebody benefiting up? The question is, who benefit? Is it the people at the top or the people at the bottom? Clearly, when when you when your policy is aligned with the Americans and they are happy that you are aligning with them, you take you do everything that them say. You, them say don't don't vote for um don't vo don't vote against Israel. You don't vote against Israel. Don't vote get, don't vote for Venezuela. You don't vote get for Venezuela. Somebody benefiting. Who benefiting? The people at the top. Money, money still flow amongst that group. And they are not. They don't need to. Um, it, the question is not. Uh, <clears throat> The question I would say to, to myself is the, peop, the people of Jamaica need just like just like the people of Venezuela would need to decide in their mind how long you're going to stay under this boots, under this heel. John. Yeah. I would wanna say I don't disagree with you, right? However, one fundamental thing that you guys keep neglecting is the fact that what we are up against. The fact of the matter is that imperialism is not something that just appears on the scene. It's something that has been developing over centuries. <clears throat> right? That's the first thing. Secondly, they are the ones who design everything. They design the economic system they, the way they want it. They institute the, law, the, the rules the way they want it. Right? They, imp they implement it the way they want to implement it. Right? And these are the factors that we're up against. Right? When we look at the, the, the situation in Venezuela and the whole... Um, development of their, their petroleum industry, right? It was developed what? Within a capitalist framework, right? Its market, for the most part, was channeled in accordance with imperialist dicti dictates. All of these things, the banking system, the whole shebang. So when you go against the grain, 
in terms of talking about revolutionizing your economy, right? You're not simply talking about coming to a realization for a need for, to change and change. There are obstacles, right? There is no, there is no blueprint. There's no real bl blueprint to do this. And even in doing so, in, within the framework that you're operating, the imperial is not rolling over. Right? Well, how do you address that? Don't how do you nothing? address it? How you address yeah. it? How you address it is you address it incrementally, right? Strategically, right? You are implementing tactically the way you can, as best you can, within the framework of what you're working with. That's what China did. That's what China did. The China example is a, is a, is a great example, you know. Right? Not even the Russians. The, the China example is really the great example. You, you and I agree on that. China. However, however let me ask you this. The reason John, why... can I say something on that? Eh? Yes, sorry, sorry. Can I say something on, on, yeah, on that, yeah, what Patrick was responding to? The, 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 the situation, if we look back, if we use it, the, the Venezuela example, and we look back before the Chavez era, we can see how the, the problems came along with, 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 with Chavez. Remember Carlos Andres Perez, he ruled at two different periods. In his first period of ruling, I think it was from about what, 1974 to, to around 1979, around that period of time. And he was the one who had started most of the nationalization of the oil and iron industry inside of Venezuela. Right? And during that first period, right, Venezuela was very tough. In his second, the second part, the second time that he ruled was I think around 1989 to about 1993. And during that period, that was a period, the height of the oil crisis. And things start to, the Venezuelan economy was affected by that. And his answer to some of the problems that Venezuela was facing was to follow the direction of the IMF, what the IMF wanted them to do, which was to free up, free up the, because remember in the first period of his rule, the oil industry was run by like the Exxon Mobil and the British Petroleum, they were the ones who were in control of the economy, the oil economy in, in Venezuela. And the nationalization got rid of most of their control. In the second period, under pressure from the IMF, he supported privatization right, of the oil industry again. Right, which brought back some of those controls. Right, after he did that, it did not help the economy much. Right, and a lot of the people, there was social unrest and all of that stuff. And that caused the whole, the political culture of the people to move more to a left wing government. And that is how Chavez came to power because the, the unrest and the reprivatization 
it caused a lot of e inequality. In a, it caused more inequality in the country. Right? And the people went, went left and supported Chavez. So the MF and the whole swing to the, to the right and to the dictates of America in order to cope with the economic pressure of the 1980s and 90s and, 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 and the IMF system, right? And the problem with Chavez is that to, to the Americans was that Chavez was not boring to the economic system that they wanted him to, to, to follow and that Perez was 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 going to in his second term, right? So it was created. The problem now is that in, in, in countries like Jamaica, our our politicians not standing up like Chavez, they're not resisting, right? The dictates of the, the World Bank, the IMF, the, the, the American government, right? They just want to follow along. Right, and this is what is, is happening in, 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 in like Jamaica. They are not resisting. They're not willing to, to chart any alternative path than what the Americans are telling them to do, right? So that's my view on, 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 on that question. That is, that is absolutely true, but it's not, it's not quite black and white the way you explain it because the thing about it is that the conditions too is what what brings about the shift, right? At different times, like for example, that person don't shift and support the left because you know them 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 um you know they are told to support them or because things necessarily point to supporting them, right? A lot of times people react based on what they feel in the pocket, right? And what their life experience is at that time. Right? And that is one of the things which, which, which lends support sometimes to the left. What happens is that within the conditions of operation, a lot of times, is we're operating in under conditions of, um, like I said, under the conditions of the imperialism, right? Which have massive tentacles, tentacles which we can begin to, 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 to even manage to, to, to go up against. Right? But that, that's, what, mean, that's, that's what, what, that's what, that's what ended the Soviet Union. Right? And what happens immediately after the Soviet Union breakup? Right? Because that was a big balance. The big balance, that's, that's where that was. After that disappeared, right? it not only impacted the other parts of the world, it impacted parts of the same, what used to be the, the same Soviet countries. Most of them split up. Most of them become bigger rivals than you could ever imagine. Right? So, so if that happened on that scale, look at it on, on, on the scale of Jamaica and so on. Right? Look at it in terms of a government, like you say, a government that is not a progressive government. Right? And at the same time, trying to ponder to the U.S. Right? And in pondering to the U.S., right, then the ordinary Jamaican feels a greater squeeze. Which him do understand, and the and, and the only explanation him can go with is based on when think him here and when think him understand, right? From the relationship with the US. Right? And this is this is one of the things which 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 lead to that social unrest, that social instability. Right? Because the emphasis is not on social upliftment, the emphasis is on capital upliftment. That's, that, that's exactly what happened in, in Venezuela. Exactly. When, when, when Chavez came to power, because remember the, the, the privatization of the oil industry, which Perez um, supported, it, it, it meant it did not mean that more money was coming to the economy to help poor people to build houses, to create jobs, all of that stuff. What it meant was that these big 
oil companies were getting more out of Venezuela than the Venezuelan economy was getting to provide development for the people, right? So instead of him doing these things and it's helping the economy, it's creating more social problems, more unrest, right? More poverty and more inequality inside of the country, right? So there had to be some alternative to that. The, the, the people started believing because under Perez, even though Perez wasn't on the left like, like um, Chavez, in his first term, they had money because the, it, the oil industry was booming and the nationalization created more wealth for the country. We but who could was spend, benefiting? The, the, the people, the Venezuelan economy was benefiting. Right? No, when you say the economy, it don't necessarily mean... No, the ordinary, but, the but, but the ordinary people, more ordinary people were benefiting under the first, in the first term of Paris because... With the nationalization that came about in around 1976, they had more money to do a lot more things. At the same time, too, don't forget that under 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 Chavez, there was there was greater a, a, a greater tightening, right? By imperialism. And yes, be, because because after the national after he renationalized some of these companies. I mean, that is when they came down on him. They started sanctions. No, they started all kind of economic squeeze. Something happened before the nationalization. Just Thank like in man. Jamaica. When, when man the moved, to, when man the moved in the 70s. For, for, hello, for hello, gentlemen. Right? Gentlemen, hold up, hold up a minute. Hold up a minute, gentlemen. Yeah, I'm going back to be excused. I have a six o'clock. So yeah, but that's what I'm getting to. That's what I'm getting to. Yeah. I have, I have, I'm I, late already. I, just a minute, just a minute. I don't think we're going to resolve this issue around the Venezuela, the oil, and what have you. What I want to do is to suggest that you get a copy of this book. Which one? Can, can, this one, this one. Can you see that? No. Read out, the name. Read out the name, read out the name, man. The Price. The Epic Quest for Oil, Money, and Power. Written by, written by who? Daniel Gergin. Y E R G I N. This is about the politics of oil. It go. It, it's a very good reading. It go right back to the finding of oil in America when it started and who are the players. But this the whole politics, not just in America, but right across. Can you see that? Yeah, what's yeah. the last name? The, make Trevor send out the name of the one that, about the Western media. I, I will do it. But the last the last name is Y E R G I N. G G I N. G I N. G I N. Yeah, but it looks like the, the whole history of oil. It, 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 it's, it's the whole politics of it, the whole history of the politics of oil. Yeah, but I want, all I want right, to but, check this out. Clive Page 800, reading that. 891 pages. Okay. Yeah, you like them big book, them. And, and, don't, and don't forget the lesson. <laughs> the politics determine economics. Of course. Anyway, so, I did Let me finish. Patrick let, say, me, let me finish because I want to wrap it up. No, we have gone over yeah, the time. Yeah. And yeah. I want to wrap it up. This was very... I, I want to tell you, I learned a lot from this discussion, you know? And I hope we can continue the discussion along that line. Okay. So to the listeners, I want to say thank you very, very much. And remember, always like and share this site, Waterhouse Vibes. Please, we are asking you to like and share. We are here every Sunday and we try to make the discussion very informative, respectful. If you notice... On this platform, we do not shout at anyone. We allow everyone to finish their thoughts, and everyone has a time to express themselves. That is, we want to put democracy 
in practice. I will try to practice it here. Okay, so. Two words, two words, Chairman, two words. <laughs> okay, so uh, until next Sunday, I wish you all the best and please like and share. And Make don't sure forget. you check Trevor for the, the book I will. propaganda. But don't huh. forget to hey, John. get this book. I'll call you tomorrow. So I have something to beg you. Be well. Yeah, man. Yeah. Get this. This is a book, the Virgin. This is a book. Yeah, man. The, the name, the price, big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, we talk. Yeah, yes, they man. have used copies right, for, for less than nine dollars. That looks like, like a nineteen sixty okay. book. It. Look like a nineteen sixty book. No, I'm on a reason. What no, year no, that no, it? No, 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 no. Might have been reprinted. No, no, what if you year? look it up, John, it's paying the cost is eight dollars ninety eight cents for a used book. We are. We are. Amazon. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. Golden fig books. www.goldenfigbooks.com. This book came it, out in 2009. Okay. All right. Oil all right. is, so, is one of the key check. resources running the, the world right, my economy. Brother. Yeah, and if we're going to talk about it, we need to know about what we're talking about. So until next week, what well, goes yes. on? Remember, to be kind to the other person. All right, gents. Uh, blessings to you in the audience. Yes, I thank you, folks. You Take care. Some interesting comments yes. here. You need to look through the comments neater. Yeah, I yeah, usually copy that. your comments, Mike, because you really do. There's a lot of people with questions in there, and there's some misguided people in there as well. So I'll leave it at that. Like anything else. Okay, my brother. Be good. Yeah. All right. All right.